Okay, we're going to try this again. I went through this once and had a little bit of a technical problem, so we're going to go through it again. What I want to do is continue the first example that we considered for steam expanding through a turbine. Uh, the schematic is shown here on the screen as before. Uh, we're going to have the same inlet conditions, that is a given pressure and temperature entering the turbine, but now uh, the pressure at the exit will be the same but now we're going to consider that the turbine is non-ideal. That is, it is not isentropic. Uh, recall that an isentropic process is uh, typically both reversible and adiabatic. And so that if either of these conditions is not true, then the isentropic efficiency is less than 100%. So it can be either non-adiabatic or irreversible or both. Uh, in this case, uh, we're pretty sure it's both because we're also specifying that the steam loses 10 kilojoules of kilogram uh, of energy as heat as it flows through uh, the process. Now, that's probably not a terribly common method of specifying the heat loss, but it's a terribly convenient for this type of calculation uh, that we're going to do. So um, just trying to uh, clean up the picture a little bit. There we go. That if we've got some some heat loss, we could show it uh, show it like that. So Q1 to 2. Yeah. That'll work. Okay. So, uh, we've got some heat loss, uh, irreversibilities present. So, the questions are what is the uh, work that's done? And then also, what is the exit state? And recall when we ask the question, what is the exit state? It depends on uh, if the state is superheated, we want to know the temperature at the exit. If it's a two phase mixture, we want to know the quality at the exit. So we proceed as before. Uh, the first order of business when we are given an isentropic efficiency is typically to analyze the ideal process. That is to consider the process with no heat transfer and with no irreversibilities. That is the isentropic process. And we uh, analyze this situation in the first example and uh, the uh, values are repeated here using the built-in functions. We've evaluated the uh, entropy, set that equal to uh, the entropy at the, uh, the S2S, the ideal expansion, and based on that and the fact that there's no heat transfer for the ideal process, then the work is calculated as before for the isentropic case is 1,243 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, um, we use the nomenclature uh, W1 to 2S to indicate that's the ideal. How do we uh, take account of the isentropic efficiency, or how does that come into play? Well, for a turbine, the isentropic efficiency is defined as the actual work divided by the ideal work or the isentropic work. So since we're given the isentropic efficiency and we found the ideal work, we can find the um, actual work just by uh, rearranging the definition of the isentropic efficiency here. And we find that the uh, actual work is the ideal work uh, multiplied by, not divided by, but multiplied by the, uh, the isentropic efficiency. And so the work output is less due to the irreversibilities and is also less because of the heat transfer um, that's lost due to flow through the turbine. Okay, so that's one part of the question, how much work is produced, uh, 1,094 kilojoules per kilogram. How do we find the final state? Well, to find the final state, we need to consider the first law for the actual process. So what's different in the actual process? Well, we wrote the first law here for the actual process, and I've rearranged it. 
to solve for the enthalpy at the exit. In other words, the heat transfer was given as minus as 10 uh, kilojoules per kilogram loss, and the enthalpy we found from the tables and the work we found using the isentropic efficiency. So we can calculate what the enthalpy at the exit of the turbine must be. And we can do that below here. The key thing to point out is that the heat is given as a loss and we have to bear in mind that heat that's a loss from the system is a negative number in our um, convention for energy flow in the first law of thermodynamics. So that goes in the equation as minus 10 kilojoules per kilogram and uh, we can see this down below that it's H1 minus W1 to 2 but plus Q1 to 2 but Q1 to 2 itself is a negative number so both the work and the heat loss are reducing the enthalpy uh, as it flows through uh, the turbine so at the exit of the turbine then the uh, enthalpy is uh, 2,319 kilojoules per kilogram. Well, the question now is, is that a superheated state or is that a two-phase state? We can refer back to our um, TS diagram. I hope most of that is appearing on your screen. I'm afraid it may be cut off here on the right. But on this TS diagram, uh, I've shown for reference the properties a uh, uh, constant pressure line at the uh, high pressure of 6 MPa and a constant pressure line at the low pressure of uh, 10 kPa. Uh, I hope you'll notice this this is drawn to scale here within Microsoft Excel and by all appearances this line in the uh, compressed liquid region is coincident with the saturation line. You'll note that when we draw a uh, sketch of a process we usually show those lines as sticking out into the uh, compressed liquid region. Uh, understand that when we do that in a cartoon fashion or a sketch fashion that that's a huge distortion that really that subcooled uh, or, or compressed liquid line of states is right above very close to that saturated liquid line. Okay, well that's just a small detail and I don't want to get lost in that. What I'm trying to tell you over here is that if we consider this saturated vapor state, even though it's on a TS diagram, we know that there's a enthalpy HG associated with this state and that for values of enthalpy greater than HG the steam exists as superheated and for values of enthalpy less than HG they exist as a two-phase mixture. So all we need to do is compare the value of H2 that we calculated to this saturated vapor value. And that's what I've done below here as we did in the previous example. I've calculated the property of uh, saturated vapor, the enthalpy of saturated vapor uh, using the pressure uh, that was given and that value is 2583 the H that we have from our calculation is 2319. So indeed, the final state is uh, in the two-phase region and it is a um, uh, two-phase mixture, a saturated mixture, and we can find the quality using one of our shortcut formulas, or as you'll recall, we could find it from uh, H. In other words, X is equal to H2 minus HF divided by HFG, but it's about 89% quality. So uh, that is basically an example of how to use the isentropic efficiency and the possibility of heat loss as it expands through the turbine to calculate the work that's done and also the exit state.